Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for June 7th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. It is Unenjoyment Friday. You can check me out at Pro Trader Strategies or Wolfman's Option or Wolfman Options, I should say. Uh, yes, you may recognize me as the Wolfman, but anyway, I'm here to teach you guys some different strategies you can implement into your portfolios and. Uh, Please remember, past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, I mentioned it is Unenjoyment Friday. It is non-farm payrolls, which is the biggest economic data point we get throughout the month, first Friday of every month on the floor. We used to call it Unenjoyment because it was usually a crazy day. Uh, but without further ado, let's get on with it. Hourly earnings came in at 0.2%, expected to be 0.3%. No revisions last month's number, so slightly lower than expected. Not a great thing. We want to see those earnings uh, hourly average earnings increase because then that helps with inflation and velocity of money, all those things to generate a good economy. And then we got non-farm payroll employment change came in at 75,000 hires, expected to be 177,000 hires. And last month's number was also revised down from 263 down to 244. So a big revision down from last month's number making this headline number look even worse. Although the unemployment rate did come in at 3.6% as expected, nothing changing there. Uh, finally, we got wholesale inventories coming in at 0.8%, expected to be 0.7. We would like to see inventories get lower uh, as we go forward through the summer because we don't want to see that stockpile. That's a, a cost to the manufacturers and um, just generally not a good sign for the economy if we see inventories building it just means that people are buying right and uh with non-farm payroll a lot of things that we were talking about earlier on in the week where it's like a bizarro world type situation where we're in right now in the uh equities bad news is good news right now because the market is putting on a full court press on these guys for lowering interest rates and that being bad economic data is good for equities is the fact that you know the forward guidance or forward looking individuals are thinking well it's time to buy equities now because things are pretty bad and the fed probably should lower interest rates in june or uh september or something like that sometime uh late in the summer anyway uh that being said the market's celebrating the fact that they believe they're right and the Fed is gonna lower interest rates. I don't think they're gonna do that uh, anytime soon. This economic data point today is not good, but we've not seen anything that's showing that we are looking at a recession. And I've talked about this. I don't think that we're gonna see boom and bust coming up. I think it's gonna be a slow trudge on this economy moving forward. I don't think the Fed can interest or increase interest rates. I think that they overdid it back in uh, late last year by increasing the last two uh, rate increases. I was talking about that then they should have stopped. But I don't think that they are going to lower interest rates right now, especially right after a uh, uh, after raising interest rates. I just don't see them doing it. Um, all right. Back to crude oil. Right at the point of control. We've talked about this time and time again. It's gotten down to the magnet now we need to get some kind of catalyst to get us to break out of this area and with the crude oil inventory numbers increasing all the time you know that's you get higher supply less demand that drives the price down we're getting a little bit of a bounce everybody's happy today because all the markets are in positive territory but we are looking at uh crude oil being right around this point of control down here and I don't really expect it to break out of this point of control uh, area. So basically, I'm looking at you know oil to be somewhere between $55 a barrel and uh, you know maybe testing that $50. I think that the test. Oops. Let's. I think the market wants to test $50 a barrel. All right. So. We might get a little bounce here, but I definitely think we need to come down and test that $50 a little bit more than we have. You know, we got down pretty close to it, but just not really close enough for me. I think it may even need to want to break that 50, at least intraday. A settlement above that would be a, 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 a coup for the bulls, though. All right, gold making new highs, 1352. This market is going through the roof. My GDX 
trade is not looking too good right now. So I'm going to be maybe looking to cover that sometime today because I was not expecting the market to really break out today. I thought that this was really starting to look like we were losing momentum to the upside and we're going to roll back over back down towards this value area and test that 1300 again, especially with the equities moving higher. But the equities are moving higher, not based on my assumption of the economy doing OK. It's based on the assumption that there's going to be maybe more easy money down the road and that should drive uh, gold futures higher if we start seeing inflation and stuff like that, them lowering interest rates, people throwing money towards gold. So kind of what we've seen back in uh, late, you know, late 2009, early 2010 uh, times. Uh, then we got the bonds moving higher. They are up one point today, you know, testing the 154 Fibonacci, this Fibonacci right here, the 61 Fibonacci, which lines up with the 154.17. Uh, we are a, trading right on that, or sorry, we're trading 154.17 right now. The market, the resistance area is 154.22, but we are right there uh, in and around that. You can see we lose a little bit of momentum. This 155 is really, uh, uh, looks like 156, sorry. Uh, the 155 area is the area that is going to be um, acting as the resistance. It's where the money is coming in and deciding this is a little bit uh, overdone. So you can see we've gone up there and tested it three times. Usually it's three times through, but that 155 area is uh, 155 even, let's call it, in the bonds is going to act as the resistance. All right, I think that's more so than even this 154.22. So we can, let's just change back to the 155, all right? So that's really where we're seeing some major resistance. Usually, like I said, third time through, that'll be the big settlement if we can settle into that 155 area um, because it's been defended several times so far. Look for that today. A settlement above there today would be a big thing. All right, VIX still in the teens. As Even with the markets moving higher, we can see the VIX is moving higher because this is just a massive move relative quickly today off of the economic data that has a tendency to spike some volatility as you can see here we've got the dow jones industrial average up over better than 250 points heading up to test this value area high i think that you know i'm still under the mantra that we are going to stay within this area right here uh for the foreseeable future i don't see the equities really pushing higher even if we have bad economic data points you know, it, that isn't necessarily good for the overall account or for the equities, all right? Um, and I think that it would be getting a little overdone here, moving to the upside. Like I've said, I think that this magnet is going to hold pretty tight. Now, NASDAQ up 140 points. You know, they're the ones that have really been uh, moving higher today with the tech sector across the board. Apple's doing well. Uh, I think even Tesla was up. That's pushing uh, the NASDAQ much higher and quicker. It's obviously out. It's up almost 2% right now. But back to the point of control, you know, we've talked about it. Uh, we're going to get extended. I thought, you know, when we started pulling back down here, uh, it would kind of hang out at the point of control. But as markets do, markets do, they like to overextend it. They like to push uh, pressure points. And that's why we kind of blew through this major support area, support and resistance at 170 or sorry, just 72.28 or 72.30. So uh, peeled right through that yesterday. We got that settlement that kind of let the, uh, got the bulls, or sorry, got the bears on their heels while the bulls started taking over and just really seeing that market push higher today. You can see we are finding resistance though at the 74.50 area. That is five zero my fives are not working out very well today but that is going to act as your resistance right there you can see uh we came up we kissed it and now we're starting to pull back just a little bit we could see this market uh you know the bulls obviously are going to fight to get that above that 7450 um but a settlement below that i think we probably stayed very close to the point of control where we start seeing uh the markets take over there all right you can see here with the e-mini s and is up only a percent versus the NASDAQ up 2%, you know, they're the ones that are really exceeding uh, expectations today and celebrating the fact that maybe there is an ease around the corner. All right, but the E-mini S&Ps have broken above yesterday. They're 
38 Fibonacci as well. As you can see, we peeled above there. That's going to act as support now, um, but we're gonna have to wait to see if it settles below this 50-day moving average. So simple moving average is going to act as a little bit of a, a resistance area, maybe not so much as normally uh, speaking, but this is something to note right in here where I think we could easily see us start popping back and forth, fill in a little bit of this, because we've talked about this create a big bell curve. That's usually when we start seeing the pattern set up like this, it will start to fill in some of those. I think that getting overextended, trying to test those highs right now is a little bit uh, um, um, too bullish, if you will, because the economic data points aren't good enough to really signal that. And even if the Fed starts talking about lowering interest rates, the economy uh, wouldn't be sustaining that kind of move, really. All right, E-mini S&Ps overnight, you can see got long, no attempt to flush those guys out on the open. As a matter of fact, it was just jump on board because the economic data points came out before the uh, Dow Jones, the equities all opened up. So people were pricing in that uh, feeling that, hey, maybe the Fed is going to have to lower interest rates. And that is very bullish for the overall equities. A um, little bit overdone to the upside for me on that. But Let's get on to the trades that I've done. Now, I've been to rule on this uh, Apple. It got back to the point of control. I think Apple's kind of seen a little bit of its um, bad news behind them. But you can see right here, the 169 area or 170, let's call it. This 170 area acted as support and it was a strong support. You can see we came down, tested it and boom, popped away. Bulls came in almost immediately afterwards. And now we're seeing this rally back to 190. Uh, 200, I think is gonna act as a major resistance. It's a psychological level, but you can see there's a tiny little gap right in here that the market may wanna try and cover before kind of hanging out here. But I think that this 170 support is going to hold strong. Uh, volatility, you can see, isn't quite at 50%. It's a, it's just below that, right around 46 or so when I put this trade on. So I decided to bend that rule just a little bit because of everything else that's going on. The markets are starting to rally. Uh, tech sector finally grabbing hold, as we saw with the NASDAQ pushing higher as well. So I think that we're going to be able to be a pretty safe location for this. And with the expectation that volatility is going to come out during the life of my option, I think that this is going to be a good setup, despite the fact that I've got a yellow light on it with the uh, implied volatility percent being slightly lower than my normal rules for this. But I want to add some stuff to my portfolio and take advantage of this high implied volatility while we've got the opportunity. So sometimes we've got to do what we've got to do. And with this, I went into the July, sold the July 165 puts in there for 89 cents. So those are, like I said, the July 169 puts uh, for, what was it, uh, 89 cents, all right? So the 169 puts, I think that they're gonna hold nicely. You can see here with the 169 puts, I told you 170, I believe it's gonna be where we find that, uh, sorry, those are the 165 puts. I was like, I'm a little bit closer than I wanted to be. 165 puts right there. So as you can see this, I talked about the 170 area being a major support. Uh, I'm actually even getting below, you can see the value area lows here. And uh, with the 165 puts, I think that I've got with these couple of little supports, uh, I'm pretty good to go because now my break even is, let's put this down, my break even is 164.11. All right, so I got a nice, I got a lot of room to the downside uh, before I'm okay, but I believe the market is going to Hang out around here. We might break above the 194 and test that 200, uh, 200 mark, but that's going to be a psychological resistance area. Sorry about the dogs in the background while I try and get through this. Who knows who's at the door right now? Um, and then we go over, and this is a trade that uh, I decided to cover yesterday. It was very close to 50% of my max profit. As you can see, I got that volatility really coming out the last couple of days, which enabled me to get out of this trade for. Uh, much better than 50% of my max profit. We're I, not much better. Today was the day that really made it much better. Actually, yesterday it was right very close to it. Um, so in this with the cues, I went in and had on the July was short the 156 puts in there. 
and I originally sold those for a dollar and two. I was able to buy them back for 34 cents. So usually, you know, yesterday was very close to it. And these are the July uh, 156 puts, sorry. These are the 156 puts, and I originally sold those for about a buck o two, I think, and I covered them for 34 cents. But that's because we got this volatility coming out today. I've got the market moving in my direction. Yesterday, it wasn't quite at 50%, but you get that big move today, volatility come back, and it's it's the double whammy to the premiums, right? I got the, the thief coming in, I got Vega leaving town, and I got my market assumption in my direction so all the delta and because it's so close to expiration with this one i got the gamma trade as well with that so the gamma coming out of it delta move higher volatility coming out everything came in and around this uh particular assumption that worked out quite nicely to get out for a little bit better than 50 percent of max profit on that um and that's about it that's all i've done today like i added the uh the Apple trade took off the queues. Still got my directional assumption on that. Um, looking to get out of the Google uh, June puts in there that I've got on the third, or sorry, the June 1300 calls that I have on. Uh, it's pretty worthless at this point, those calls, but there's just not a whole lot of eyeballs on those markets that far away. So I might just have to wait and uh, let those expire worthless, or I've got a bit in there and hopefully I'll get hit one of these days. So it's a GTC. That's about it. Ran a little bit long today, but had a lot to talk about. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Also, uh, check out our Facebook page and give us a like because some of these daily market commentaries are coming out on there. Also, we have a bunch of other free stuff that we're throwing out onto the Facebook page um, that will help you out in your trading days. So check it out at Pro Trader Strategies. And if you can't take that, take it easy.